In this tutorial, we're going to look at how to create a form using Google Docs. Now, a form can be used to get the answers to questions or to give a survey in a class. In my Google Docs, I'm going to click on Create, and I'm going to create a new form. When I create the new form button, I come into the Edit Form view. Before we start, though, let's do some housekeeping. Uh, the Allow Users to Edit Responses tab, this would allow users, when they finish the form and have submitted, to change their mind on answers, and we're not going to let them do that today. Uh, I will require, though, that my users log in as MSAD60 users, and I'm going to make sure I know who is sending forms to me by checking the Automatically Collect Respondents Username button. To title the form, we'll simply click on the title window, and this name becomes the name of the form, as you see when it's become saved later on. Let's give some instructions to our students. Make sure they think before they answer. And notice down below we have some questions uh, available to edit. So sample question one we'll type in. Very important question. And because it's going to be somewhat of a long answer, I'll make this a paragraph text so we can have an open response here. Let's make this a required question today. Notice sample question two doesn't seem to have the same kind of editing functions. Well, if I hover over sample two, I can move over to the pencil, click on the pencil, and now I can edit sample question two. So let's try a different kind of question. Let's do a, a multiple choice. So how about... Um, And the type of answer will be a multiple choice. So let's put some answers in. Let's throw a couple of curveballs. And let's put the correct answer in here. And let's put a wrong answer at the bottom. And once again, we'll make this required. Now notice I'd like to go on to question three, but there doesn't seem to be a place to do that. Well, I've got to change my procedure just a bit in order to get beyond two questions. I'll click on Add Item. And now I can choose the type of answer I would like. And let's do a scale this time. We'll, we'll rate something. And let's do this. We'll ask the user how much they like snow. And we'll do a 1 to 5 scale. 1 will be. And 5 will be. I'll make it required. I'm finished with my quiz here. And I'd like to save it. Now, Forms does have an autosave function, but it seems to be very, very slow, and I find myself often clicking the Save button to save the form. Before I move back to Google Docs and look at the form, I want to show you the URL. It's on the bottom of the Edit Form, and if I copy this URL, I'm doing Command-C on my keyboard, I could paste it into an email to send to students, or I could paste it onto a web page that my students might use, and when they click the URL, the form will pop up. Let's go back to Google Docs, and here's the sample form that I made. Now, as the creator of the form, what I see when I open the sample form is a spreadsheet view. The answers will eventually populate into these columns. To show you what the user would see, your student would see, let's click on the word form. You see we have different choices, one of which is go to live form. And the live form is just what the student sees when they, when they click on your URL. Let's put some answers in. I won't do all eight reindeer, but we'll do as many as I can remember. That's it. Uh, let's get the answer correct here. And how much do I like snow? We'll go there. And I'll submit the form. I'm thanked for submitting my form. Let's go back to Google Docs and see what happened. Well, here are the answers. My name is under username, and the answers that I placed in there are underneath the questions on the columns. One little uh, wrinkle, a little addition I can show you. If you're using this as a quiz and you like to make it somewhat self-correcting, I'm going to click on the column that has how many feet in a mile, so the whole column is highlighted. And under Format, I'm going to pick Conditional Formatting. Here it says if the text contains, let's put the right answer in there, and we'll make the text a certain color. We'll make it green just to show that it's correct. So if, the, if my student gets the answer correct, you'll see it automatically coming up in green. If the answer is wrong, it won't be green, so it makes an easy visual correction.